I bought the cheapest 3000 watt inverter available on eBay. Was it a good deal or did it get ripped off? Let's find out. Hi everyone, Neralar here, and today I bought the cheapest 3000 watt inverter on eBay. Now I'm not talking about those that are obviously misadvertised, something like this that's rated for 10,000 watts. I'm not covering that garbage. This is one that I thought had a reasonable shot at being a decent 3000 watt inverter at a very low price. So this is what I picked up. It is a Pugu 3000 watt modified sine wave inverter. It cost me $200. This particular voltage model was not available. They advertised a 12 and a 24 volt model. I asked, do you have that available in 48 volts? And they said, yes. Now there are pure sine wave and modified sine wave inverters out there. The pure sine wave inverters typically cost a little bit more. And because they have more components in them, they tend to be a little bit less efficient. So if I'm getting the cheapest possible inverter, I wanted the cheapest possible architecture. They do have a similar model that's pure sine wave. That's $100 more, $300 instead of $200. I got this one. All right, now let's see what's in the box. This came all the way from Shenzhen, China, and I'm not quite sure how, but it made it here in one week. So let's see if this is what I bought or not. Makes me wonder if there is a retail box inside or not. And there we go. It is marked as a power inverter. 12, 24, 48 volts, 110, 120 volts, and 3,000 watts. So there must have been a version of it that uh, pre-existed. Hmm. What do you think? Are these good for 3,000 watts? I can bend them with my fingers. What do they claim to be in terms of gauge? That's really interesting. They don't have a gauge or millimeter rating on them. There's some Chinese text, maybe that says it. But I would think they'd still use the same number system we do. I have to say this thing is well packaged. High frequency verter instruction for use. We'll go over this in a little bit. So, this is the Pugu DC to AC modified sine wave inverter. Has decent weight to it. It's not unlike what I'd expect for a 3000 watt inverter. Power switch. Seems normal. So let's see what we have here. It is a aluminum anodized clamshell case. Nothing unusual there. 3000 watts, 48 volts, these terminals seem adequate for that. These cables do not. The fan on here is a XDR brushless fan. 24 volt fan. I am going to have to look at that before I turn it on to see how that's hooked up. That makes absolutely no sense. That's a little worrying. So, I think you know what the first thing I'm going to do is. And that's void the warranty. But first, let's take a look at the high frequency inverter instruction for use. I took a couple of minutes to read through this and it's not all that bad a manual really. Uh, it's much better than I expected. So. This is a 3000 watt 48 volt input inverter. That means it needs about 80 amps of input current to do with 3000 watts. This cable is, as I mentioned, woefully inadequate. I'm not sure if that's a sign of things to come or not. However, they did send this thing of fuses. There are eight 20 amp fuses. Now, assuming that this is one fuse change for this inverter, which is normally what they send with an inverter, these are eight 20 amp fuses. That would be enough for a 6000 watt inverter. Um, yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what this means. I guess we'll open it up and take a look. I'm guessing it's just over fused though, and these will really never blow. So inside the manual here, it states that using this manual must be a qualified electrical engineer certified by the local electrical authority. So I'm guessing there's about 12 people in each state that, that, that this inverter can be used by. Otherwise, you're using it improperly. They have a table down here with number of different things in it. I don't know if I fall in this 400 to 3000 watt or above 3000 watt category. I'm guessing this one. Input current less than 45 amps. I, this is just all nonsensical gibberish. I have no idea what's going on. So I guess we'll just skip this. 
Here they have ratings for pure sign and modified sign in the same table. It, it's just a table. The information is worthless. Special functions. I thought this was somewhat interesting. They state that you can overload it to 125% and it will sound an alarm and stop working after 20 seconds. Hmm. So does that really mean I can get 3500 watts or so out of this for 20 seconds? Yeah, I kind of doubt that, but we'll see. Uh, here they have over 10 protection ADC. That's way too high. I don't know why it's so high. There's a good chance it'll fry before that trips, but that's what it is. Reverse connect is strictly prohibited. Like most inverters, you connect it backward, you blow the fuses. This manual only states 12 and 24 volts. This is a 48 volt version. Once again, it doesn't really match. Um, safety instructions, those are all pretty normal. The English in here is pretty good. I don't expect perfect English necessarily from some of these Chinese products that are lower in cost, but sometimes they're so bad you can't even tell what they're trying to say. This one doesn't have that issue, so it's just fine. Troubleshooting, they say that over temperature, we, we suggest you don't run it at more than 70% load. So I'm guessing this thing will not cool very well. That would make it more like a 2000 watt inverter, and that is what I expect out of this inverter. I really don't expect 3000 watts at this price point, I expect 2000. So if I get three, I'll be pretty happy. Here they have a bunch of pictures of the different inverters that you can get. They have one here, a couple here, over here. This one has lugs, that's what you'd expect out of a 3000 watt inverter. This is their pure sign model, I um, happen to see it online. Didn't get that one, like I said, it's extra hundred dollars. And uh, notice none of these pictures match what we got. They do say one year warranty here, warranty off grid inverter card. However, if you go back here, under warranty, they say we provide a one and a half year warranty from date of installation. So there's something a little shady going on here. I expect no warranty at all. So once it's past my eBay purchase period, I'm guessing I don't get anything. I wanted to briefly show the actual listing that I bought this from. Here's the 3000 watt Pugu inverter. They have a drop down box here. You can select 12 or 24 volts. I wanted 48. That's why I had to contact them. And your two output voltage options. $200. Free shipping. Happened to be from Shenzhen, not this location. And it did arrive within a week. That was pretty impressive. Here they have a weight. They say that it weighs uh, 5.8 kilograms. It weighed significantly less. Um, so I'm not too happy about that. But it is a 48 volt version. Maybe that one weighs less. I don't know have some specs here which don't mean a whole lot and I thought this was interesting suggestion our modified sine wave inverter you'd better use with resistance load appliances better not use with inductive load appliances oh you bet I'm going to better use with inductive load appliances but this is the listing that I, that I purchased it from I'm not advertising for this particular listing I just thought it'd be interesting to show exactly what I bought inside the Pugu inverter so like most of them of this style it looks like there are just two screws here and two screws on the other side and the top half of this case should lift right off. So let's give that a try. It feels like these are not pre-threaded. That's pretty typical. They just uh, rammed these threads right through the aluminum. That causes aluminum shavings to be given off which can short stuff out. I don't particularly like that construction technique, but that's what almost everybody does, so at this price point I can't really blame them. I've seen it done, but it's pretty rare. Alright, now let's see if this thing comes apart. And there is the inside of the Pugu 3000 watt inverter. Inside the inverter there's a few interesting things in here. I had mentioned that this is a 24 volt fan over here. Well, over here on the circuit board in this corner these, there's these two TO20 FETs. And the PCB there, if you can read that, is labeled 24 volts. So that must be where 24 volts is coming from. I guess I won't test that. We'll see if the fan runs or not. There are these four transformers here that are labeled 48 volts and two on top. That's not quite what I was expecting. Each one of these is fused at 40 amps or 
20 amps for each transformer, however you want to look at it, it's in parallel. But that makes this a 120 amp fused unit, which is good for more than 3000 watts. So I suppose it is possible that this thing can do 125% for 20 seconds. Not completely out of the question. It's kind of interesting how they have this made. There's two sets here of these TO3s or TO, what is it, 267s. These large uh, bridge, H bridge here, for here and an H bridge, for here and an H bridge. They don't look up to see if they're connected in parallel or series, probably parallel. But that's the output stage. Here looks like a 24 volt LDO or something. I'm not quite sure what's going on in that corner. And then on the top lid, you can see that these TO220s, these are the H bridge to drive this transformer to uh, boost the voltage. I assume these two are in series. And these two here and these two here. I'm not sure if this whole set is in series or parallel, but just by the way that this thing's built, I'm guessing that there's three sets in parallel. Not sure. But these are heat synced directly to the lid, which is fine. They just have this little Teflon pad here to electrically separate it. Uh, it's pretty typical. If you go over here on this side, it's the exact same setup, except they are all heat synced to this aluminum bar. And this aluminum bar here is not connected to the outside of the case. It's just butted up against it. The heat sink fins don't contact the anodized case. So this bar is going to get much, much hotter than the case. And we have the temp sensor in this corner connected to that aluminum bar. The cleanliness of the PCB and such is pretty decent, I guess, for this price point. There's more in here than I expected. We have these two little control boards right here. I'm not exactly sure what they do, but they seem fairly complicated for what this is. That makes me hope that it's a phase-corrected modified sine wave inverter instead of the, the cheaper method. Over here on the output, you can see that the ground lug is completely disconnected. Now, there's no ground connection between the output and the case, and there is no way to ground the case. There's no ground lug, no ground screw or anything. So that's probably not ideal. The capacitors on here are not terrible. They're all 105C caps. Right here we have the input ones. Eight there, and another four over here. They seem perfectly adequate. They're Aisha brand. Uh, I've seen it before. I don't know anything about it. But they're 100 volt rated, which is kind of impresses me. I'm surprised they did that. I expect them to be 63 volts, um, which is just the absolute bare minimum for this type of inverter. But no, they're 100 volts, so that's good. On the output here, we have these 200 volt capacitors, and I'm disappointed in that. I'd like to see 250 volts. It's kind of interesting down here. We have these uh, jumpers. Um, you can see that one of them is cut right here. This is actually their current sense on their output. So you can see they just kept adding jumper wires until their current sense was about correct, and then they cut one off. So that's kind of hokey. I don't know if you can see down here very well, but right down in there, they cut that trace with an X-Acto knife in between those two black wires, and then put a solder blob on to reconnect them together. Not sure what happened. Someone made a mistake, I guess. Over here we have a, a JST style jack um, that is burnt. No idea what happened there once again. I assume someone slipped at the soldering iron. So this whole thing is pretty cheap. Um, it looks like they use the same circuit board for all of their different voltages and just load it differently. That's kind of what I'm getting out of this. Which gives me some hope because a 48 volt input means you have a lot less stress in the input. At one quarter of the current, one sixteenth the heating. One thing I forgot to note are diodes. We covered the input FETs over here and on the side of the case and the output FETs over here, but we didn't cover the diodes. And that's because the diodes are pretty weird. Um, right here, those four heat sinks, they each have a TO220 diode on them. Now diodes can get pretty dang hot before they fail, so I'm guessing they're just letting these things cook. 